You can't deposit likes. That's what Nick, my client and owner of three restaurants, said to me in April 2015 as I tried to get them to shift their massive marketing budget from radio, TV, and billboards to digital marketing, specifically Facebook. We had grown their fan base from 3,000 to 39,000 in one year, and he didn't understand how those people who had liked his page could actually convert to the profit and loss statement. Well, today, I'm going to tell you exactly how we've done that and how you could be doing it too. My goal is to help, to help restaurant owners finally get to where they want to go. But more than that, my goal is to find entrepreneurs within that segment that actually know what it means to hustle. That's my goal. Come on the journey with me. Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 598. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and we are dedicating today's podcast to an Instagram hater, a keyboard warrior, somebody throwing me some shade that apparently doesn't know his own industry and can't use Google, Jay McKinley123. You see, I love going through the comments of what we post online because it gives me fodder, but it also gives me content to talk about. In this case, he was commenting that you can't track what's called in the marketing world, Facebook conversions, also commonly referred to as online conversions, website conversions, basically meaning that you're taking somebody from the digital universe that they live in their phone today and into your restaurant's profit and loss statement. The comical part is we've been doing this for about 10 years. And if he's actually a digital marketer, he should have learned it over 10 years ago. So let me go back to my intro. It's April of 2015, and our client, Nick, who at the time, and I'm not sure his involvement now, but had three restaurants that we dealt with. These restaurants were big. Between the three, they were doing 24 million-ish annually. Big, large breweries, beer gardens, great restaurants. We controlled about a million to a million three of the advertising budget. And they were hardcore into radio and TV and billboard and direct mail and couponing. And I was trying my hardest to get them into the digital age. We worked with them for, I think, six years, maybe seven years. And at this time was when we had started the breakthrough and get them to understand the value of digital marketing. But we're in a meeting and I had just presented how we had grown the one location's Facebook fan base the prior year from 3,000 to 39,000 fans and how we had grown the email list and we had started a birthday program and we had this loyalty program we were driving traffic to from the email list. Things were really starting to take take shape within our marketing funnel for this restaurant. And Nick, who was not a digital marketing guy, who was not a digital guy at all, his emails were read to him off of a printed paper from his secretary and then he would give her the response. He turned to me with his flip phone in hand and said, Matt, I can't deposit likes. He said, if I go to U.S. Bank tomorrow, I can't take those 39,000 customers from Facebook and deposit them in the bank. If we're going to spend time, money, and effort on digital marketing, I need to know that they are spending money in the restaurant, which to me was the ultimate ironic conversation because, like I said at the time, I was directing a million plus in advertising spend just for those three restaurants, and the majority of it was going to radio, TV, and billboards which we sure as hell couldn't track. And so here I am with tangible results saying, look, there are 39,000 people. Here's their names. Here's some of their emails. Here's all this information. We can track that. And that led me down the path that is what we have today. Our companies, my different three different divisions, will work with over 3,000 restaurants in 2024 By 2027, we will have 10,000 or so restaurants in our universe with regards to digital marketing. And one of the biggest reasons that we acquired Repeat Returns last year, which has been doing digital marketing since 2008 as well, was to be able to tell the entire story. We've been telling the story the past 10 years of how you can take somebody from Facebook and into an email list and into your restaurant that one or two first couple visits with repeat returns, we can now tell the entire story where, Hey, Matt Plapp commented on this Super Bowl post and then walked in the restaurant two weeks later and has now come in 26 times. 
my friends, it's there. The ability to track people and their journey to your restaurant has existed for a long time. In a couple weeks, I'm going to the NRA show with a handful of my team. I remember going there back in 2015 and doing a little joke video from the event saying, everybody in this restaurant show, the 4,000 booths, the 400 or so marketing booths, just got in a DeLorean and went back 20 years because they were preaching the same old bullshit from the 80s. None of them had embraced technology that was available in 2015. And when I go in two weeks from now, they sure as hell still won't be embracing it. They'll still be talking about the same crap. But after the break, I'm going to talk to you about results that we have seen and give you an idea of what's available so you understand. Maybe you're not a digital marketer like Jay from Instagram. Maybe you're a restaurant owner that really honestly doesn't understand what's available. Now, Jay should know. I know. You as a restaurant owner probably don't know and shouldn't know what's available at the high levels. You need to have experts helping you. Well, I'm your expert today. I'm actually going to walk you through results from a few restaurants and tell you the journey of those customers from digital to a database to spending money in the restaurant. Commercial time. Okay, today I want to talk about something quick, something easy, and something you need to have. Restaurant owners, the America's Best Restaurants RGA Guide. Revenue Generating Activities. This is a 12-month planner, marketing, and sales tactics to help you double your restaurant sales. If you want to grow your restaurant, you have to grow your database. You have to grow the attention you're getting on Facebook and Instagram. You have to grow your influence in your community. And in my opinion, you need to double it. We have created an inexpensive marketing training that you could take advantage of today. It is the Restaurant RGA Guide. Go to mattplapp.live slash RGA. Now back to the show. Okay, now for the part that I really, really enjoy. Where the rubber meets the road, or in this case, where the conversion happens. Where the social media engagement, the website engagement, hits your profit and loss statement. This is where I show our Instagram fan how what we've been doing for the past 10 years is available. And it's happening every single day. Now, I've got three pizza restaurants for one of two reasons. Number one, because all three of them are the same type of restaurant similar price points, and it allows me to tell you a story across the same type of clients. But also, I think because I'm in the middle of a five-day fast and I'm pretty damn hungry and pizza's on my mind. So the first one is a restaurant that listens to everything we say and takes massive action with everything that we advise them to do. They are a 10 out of 10 performer when it comes to clients. The next one is a client that is middle of the road, that doesn't listen to everything we say, has a solid restaurant, but the results aren't going to be as good as the first one. And the last one is a brand new client because they are a repeat returns client. They are the software company that we bought repeat returns and tied to arrow point of sale. So they are the missing link because for the last 10 years, we've been doing front of the marketing funnel acquisition, getting customers information, driving the initial visit, but not knowing what's happened in the future. We don't know the lifetime value. Repeat Returns does because it follows it through the journey. What's cool about the last one is I'm able to show them how somebody who commented on a big game, aka the Super Bowl Facebook post, was re-engaged and walked in the restaurant and spent money. And this was a person that had been in their loyalty program for a couple of years. So I'm going to show you the whole story because I want you to understand what's available with regards to online conversion into your point of sale into your profit and loss. The first restaurant, I'm going to look at a couple aspects here. The first one is their website pop-up. They have a website pop-up that we put on their site for them that gets people to opt in, get their data, and then drives them in. In the past 24 months, 24 months or so, they've had 2,045 people join through that pop-up. Now, there's no cost to that. There are people going to the website. Some of them are kicking tires. Some of them are checking it out from a friend to comment about it, and some of them are probably ordering pizza. 2,045 of them gave us their information, and of those, 1,185 sales came from that, meaning on the front end, 
58% of those people walked in the restaurant. Now, those 58% spent $35,217.82 after whatever discount they were given, whatever bribe, you know, buy one, get one free pizza, free appetizer, whatever. So in that instance, 35217, let's do some math here, 217. I'll leave out the decimal point. Divided by 1185, $29.71 average check. So there was no cost. That is an ancillary benefit of working with us or whoever the hell you're working with. If you got a tool on your website that gathers data, that gives them something that's trackable in the restaurant, you don't really have much of a cost. It's kind of a, they say kill two birds with one stone. You, you have marketing traffic somewhere. And then the second stone's your website, you know, the bonus traffic. But there's $35,000 in sales. Let's do that 35000 Divided by, let's just call it 24 months. So there's $1,500 in sales per month the last two years just from a website widget. So that is what we call an online conversion. The person came from the website, ended up in the point of sale, good to go. The net retention posts. So we have a couple different categories here, but I'll add all three of these up, I guess. So we've got 1,387 customers that were gained into the database from commenting on a Facebook post. Then we've got 481 that were gained through commenting through another type of Facebook post. And then we've got 118. So we've got 1,986 people that commented on social media posts in this client's marketing funnel that we gained their data. So I got to remember that number, 1986. Now let me look at the people who spent money. 452 plus 295 plus 88. So I've got 835 divided by, what was that number? Let's go to my pictures. I took a screenshot of it. 1986. I've got a 42% conversion rate. So yes, it's a lot lower than my website because these people are commenting on social media. Many of them found it from a friend commenting and coming into their funnel because their friend commented and they wanted to comment. Maybe it was like a pineapple on pizza post. So there's 42% of the people who commented on the post, joined the program, and then walked in the restaurant. Now, sales-wise, let's see what that adds up to be. $13,199 and two cents, $8,802 and and three cents, and then $2,566 and 24 cents. So we've got $24,500, and that is divided by... Let's see here, 24,005 divided by, I've got 452 visits, I've got 295 visits, and I've got 88 visits. So I got 730, or 835 visits, so 24,5, not exact math here, I understand. Okay, same thing, $29 average check. So in that same exact time, they've got another $1,000 a month over two years coming in. So there's $2,500 a month in tangible, trackable, sales just from those two efforts. Now, I also have at the very top of the screen our messenger ads. So we run Facebook messenger ads to get consumers. There's 6,500 people that have joined the program in two months there, two years there. There's 2,100 that have joined there. There's $60,000 in sales there. So my friends, yes, you can track people coming from digital media, your website, Facebook ads, Instagram and Facebook comments into a database and the database into your restaurant. No if, ands, or buts right there. Now let's go to the lower level client. This is a client that doesn't have as much action, but they still got some action. Website pop up, 651 people have joined. Now they've been a client, I want to say, for coming up on 10 months, and they've got 200 people that have redeemed. So 200 divided by 651, we got about 30%. Yep, 31%. $4,300. So if I take $4,300 divided by 10 months, they've got $430 in sales a month from a website pop-up. Again, no expense. If I look at their Facebook comments, they've got 346 people divided by, and they got 137 redemptions. So 137 divided by 346, 39%, 39.5. So almost 40% if you round up, of the people who commented on their Facebook post, who joined the database, walked in and spent $3,200. Now, their paid ads 
4,500 opt-ins, 1,100 redemptions, $23,000 in sales. What's 1120 divided by 4,500? 4, 25% of the people who came in through the paid ads. Okay, so there you go. You got paid ads, you got a website pop-up, you got Facebook comments that got people to give us their data that walked in and spent money. And if you're looking at that, let's say the last restaurant that doesn't have the greatest results, they've got $39,000, actually, to be specific, $38,974.64 in gross sales over the past year after the discount. So if you look at that, and I look at their database, 32% of the people who joined that walked in told us they were already coming. They're frequent customers. But that leads leaves around 68% who weren't. So if I take $38,000 times 0.68, that's $25,000. That's how much the sales of the people who told us in this marketing funnel who came from the website, from the Facebook comments, from the paid ads, that's 25 grand in sales that was not happening. Now, if I take my food costs off of that, that's $18,000 in incremental sales that happened just from that marketing effort. And you got another 6,000 people's information. But let's take it to the next level because this is what's really, really, really cool. So we did a case study with a restaurant brand we work with that uses repeat returns and is tied in through the arrow point of sale. And the gentleman from Arrow point of sale was involved in this conversation as well because we wanted to get all of the data and, you know, they don't trust marketing people. I get it. They want to look at their data, compare it to our data and see if it matches. So what we did in this instance was we ran our acquisition and our engagement campaigns, meaning we ran the paid ads through Facebook Messenger, through Facebook posts to get people to join the program. And we made some social media posts on their pages to get engagement, to put people in the database, to walk in the restaurant. I'll give you a quick overview. The acquisition ads had 8,900 engagements. This was across five restaurants in four weeks. 8,900 engagements and gained 2,965 people's information at a cost of $1.77. So you got 3,000 or so people joined this program across five restaurants. So you got 600 customers that gave us their information from those engagements. Pretty damn good. 64% of those customers told us they were brand new to the restaurant or had not been in a while. Now, let's look at the other aspect of that. Let's look at the engagement because we ran contests. We ran a Valentine's. Guess how many hearts are in the candy jar? Do you like pineapple on your pizza, yes or no? Do you? Who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl, the big game in our instance? So let's just go to two of these. Pineapple on pizza, yay or nay? One page in particular had 364 comments. Pretty damn good. The... Big game ad was the same thing. Had like 400 comments. So here is the engagements. These five restaurants, let me find it, over the four weeks, got a 800 times engagement increase. So meaning it went from zero to 800 times more than they were getting on just the comments. Now, when the people comment, they go into Messenger. We get their information. We drive them in. But here's a story I want to tell you. One of these customers... Rich from Arrow had pulled up. They had commented on the big game and they had commented in Messenger once we got their information that they hadn't been to the restaurant in a while. They were a lost customer. And then they walked in the restaurant and they spent $56 within two weeks of commenting on that post. Now, here's where it gets really cool. We went into repeat returns, which connects to the Arrow point of sale. And this customer was, in fact, in repeat return database. They were a loyalty member. They had not been in a restaurant in two years. Before that two years, they were active all the time. And we can look and repeat returns and see where the email and the text campaigns didn't re-engage the customer. We can look in arrow point of sale and confirm this customer's purchases had fallen off. And now they're back. So two of the things we're bringing to the repeat returns when we combine these two companies and create this new powerhouse platform is the fact that Repeat returns has elements within it to keep people engaged, your best customers typically. We have the ability to acquire new eyeballs but re-engage people through weird tactics. A Facebook post that says pineapple and pizza, yay or nay, and gets one of your local people to comment. And guess what? That person had been in a restaurant two years ago but hadn't been back since, and that comment drives them into Messenger, gives them a valuable offer, and gives them a reason to come by the restaurant again. 
That is what we call Facebook conversions. That is what we call converting a digital eyeball from your website, from Facebook, from Instagram, from your Google listing, from your Yelp listing into a database and the database into your point of sale and onto your profit and loss. My friends, what's available in 2024 that 99% of you are not practicing is insane. The streets are lined with gold, and that's why we here at America's Best Restaurants, at Repeat Returns, at Restaurant Marketing That Works, are here to help you understand how to take advantage of that. During this podcast, you heard a commercial for the RGA Guide. The RGA Guide is the ultimate restaurant marketing tool for do-it-yourself, and if you become a client of somebody or you have somebody help, helping you with your marketing, it's a tool to help amplify all of that and track it. You need to take the bull by the horns. The guy from Instagram ain't close to being right. What was his name? Jay, uh, Jay McKinley123. He's a digital marketer, apparently, from the verbiage he used on there and from what his profile, and he doesn't know this is available. I don't expect you to know it's available either. But I expect you now to know because you just heard it from me. And there's going to be a blog post on my website the next day, the puzzle. Not sure what day it'll be, but you'll see it. It'll say converting traffic online and social media to your cash register. That's all I got. Sorry for the long pod today, but I think it was worth it. Talk to you tomorrow. So as you know, I don't charge my content. We don't have sponsors. We don't have product placement in here. But what I want your help with is spreading the word. If you're finding value here, do me a favor. Share this on your social media. Share an episode with something that made sense to you, that's relevant to your restaurant, that you got value from, and tag Matt Plapp and America's Best Restaurants. Also, go to America's Best Restaurants on Facebook and on Google and leave us a review. Let us know the impact we've had on your restaurant with our roadshow, with our marketing help, or with our podcast. And last but not least, if you want to take the next step and help me out a lot and help us out a lot, text me a testimonial, 859-743-2408. That's my cell. A selfie video would be awesome about the impact this content or our company is having on your independent restaurant. But worst case scenario, just a few kind words. The way we can help lift this industry up is to help get content like this to more independent restaurant owners, and you are the key to spreading the word. I appreciate your support. Have an amazing day.